For many years now, scientists were absolutely certain that at some point in the past, this beautiful planet Mars actually had a very big ocean on it. But what actually baffled them and what kind of confused the scientists is that even today we can't really seem to see any kind of a shoreline on the surface of Mars. And because of this, many scientists were not really certain if this was true. But very recently, a group of scientists has actually proposed a very interesting theory that explains why there is no shoreline and it actually makes a lot of sense. Let's talk about this theory today. Welcome to What the Math. Now, most of the scientists that study Mars, they're actually certain that the face of Mars um, four, 4 to 3.4 billion years ago was very different from what it looks like today. Uh, the planet was still young, it actually had an active inner core, and so it very likely had magnetic field. Um, it, and because the magnetic field was present, it also had atmosphere, which obviously allowed it to have liquid water on the surface, because it's actually part of the habitable zone of our solar system, meaning that it should technically be able to have liquid water. Uh, but over time, something started happening to the core and Mars started losing uh, the magnetic field. So let's actually add the magnetic field first. Uh, we're going to give this, let's just say about one gauss of magnetism, which will basically create this beautiful magnetic field around Mars, um, which is what Mars probably looked like in, um, several billion years ago. Um, obviously, its climate was a lot warmer, so it was very likely to be uh, above zero degrees Celsius, which allowed it to have liquid water, and it also very likely had a relatively thick atmosphere as well. And so if we create this type of Mars, you'll notice that its Earth similarity is now 83%. The li likelihood of life here is something like 57%. So um, this is actually one of the reasons why many scientists think that maybe this is actually where life was born on Mars, because Mars had liquid water and also uh, conditions that were very favorable for life much before Earth did. And we know that um, Mars also... Uh, he had a lot of collisions that then created these asteroids, which then landed on Earth. So many people, many scientists think that some of these asteroids may have contained life particles that uh, reached Earth and then brought life to Earth. So that's one, one of the theories. It's called panspermia, and this is a theory that basically talks about uh, the creation of life from outside of Earth, and that uh, life was brought to Earth uh, by something, and this is how life was born on our planet. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is, so was there an ocean, and where are the signs of this ocean? But first, let's actually simulate what actually happened to Mars, very very likely happened to Mars, over the next um, several million years. So at some point, the core of Mars started to get cooler, and uh, the motion of any kind of metallic material stopped. And that's because Mars just doesn't have enough mass to maintain it, there's just not enough temperature on the inside, so its core became solid. When the core becomes solid, what happens is uh, you lose your magnetic field slowly at first, but much faster near the end. And so at some point, it completely disappeared. So Mars was completely exposed to various solar particles, high energy particles that would then slowly start stripping Martian atmosphere as well, decreasing it with time to what it is now, which is something like 1% of atmosphere on Earth. So basically, it lost its atmosphere because solar radiation started to basically attack all of these par uh, air particles or gas particles that were on the surface of the atmosphere. They would energize them and they would essentially release them into the outer space. And so Mars was then atmosphereless, which made it lose its liquid water as well, which started to slowly turn into ice. And the way it started happening is, it was actually uh, not a very slow process, but it did happen over a period of about 100 million years. First, uh, the, all of the ocean shoreline started to recede, and so it started losing all of this water, and you can kind of see it slowly receding there um, into the nothingness. But at some point, it got so cold here that all of this water also started to freeze and become a kind of a ice water slushy mixture. So basically, it wasn't even liquid water anymore, it was actually icy water. 
And so over the next million or so years, uh, all of this liquid water then became this ice water or ice slushy water and possibly even completely ice. Uh, that then stopped evaporating, but now just started subliming. This is a, a term we use for when something uh, doesn't really evaporate, but goes directly into the gas form from its hard form. It's called sublimation. And eventually, all of it kind of just disappeared. And this is what Mars looks like today. Now, what's missing from this picture, of course, is the fact that if you look at the Martian surface, and then if you look at Earth's surface, you'll notice that... Um, you can kind of tell where Earth oceans are because there is shorelines, but Mars doesn't seem to have these. And that was that was basically the mystery. So if Mars had ocean, and we are almost certain it had ocean, where are the shorelines? And so this is actually the brilliant proposition that the scientists, the group of scientists made in uh, May of 2016. They've realized there was something else going on here and they've actually discovered proof for it. So they've actually looked at the area right here, uh, the area of Mars that's uh, sort of in the northern part where ocean very likely had the shoreline and they started to look for details and what they discovered is there there weren't really shorelines but there were these really really strange lobes that you see on the screen right now that we know may have formed from nothing but a tsunami these are actually very very common on earth as well uh, when a tsunami strikes and these were because a very large wave basically deposits um, these materials from from within the ocean at uh, various sort of locations along the surface and they found these lobes right here so there's actually a lot of them i don't know if i can show it to you i'm going to try to remove some water just to see if we can possibly simulate this so unfortunately, it's not very visible here, but there, there's a line of lobes right here and there's another one right here. And what's interesting is that they found two different types of lobes. The first type was very likely caused by um, a collision with a very large asteroid, so it probably um, collided with Mars somewhere over here. And this is because this is early solar system collisions were very, very common, as you can kind of tell by the surface of Mars today. There's quite a lot of collisions. And so this asteroid, we're going to simulate this right now, and here it comes. It collided with Mars and created a very, very large tsunami. And specifically here, we're talking about not just a tsunami, but a mega tsunami. It uh, left a crater that was about 30 kilometers in diameter. And this shock wave would create a very large tsunami. It would then um, create a wave that would deposit things um, from the shoreline to about 200 kilometers inland and would actually completely destroy the shoreline. So the previous shoreline was very likely destroyed by this very large collision um, when the Mars was already losing its atmosphere and already losing its ocean. So that was the first uh, explanation or the first tsunami and the first collision. And so this is when the original shoreline was completely kind of destroyed and these lobes were deposited across the surface of uh, Mars. And then several million years later when Mars has already cooled down and when its ocean has already receded quite a lot to the point where it was somewhere over here in this area. Um, when the ocean has already started to freeze over and become icy, another collision occurred as well. And the second collision caused another tsunami. So we're going to simulate that again by launching another asteroid at Mars in a very similar sort of fashion. So um, when this happened, Another mega tsunami, and these tsunamis were something like 120 meters high or 400 feet high, which is um, probably the largest tsunamis you can kind of imagine. We do have them on Earth occasionally, but they're very, very, very rare. Um, and uh, so this second tsunami, this was after the second collision, deposited ice slush. So it wasn't even rocks anymore, it wasn't even water, but it was this ice slush that sort of created these very different lobes that were spread across over here and over here and over here. And we actually, or the scientists who studied this, actually saw them. And what they've realized is that, first of all, this is the location where a lot of the ancient ocean ice must have been deposited by this tsunami. And if we one day go and study it, we might discover not only the composition of early ocean on Mars, but we might even be able to discover if there was any life in it because there would be quite clear signs of um, early bacteria or uh, bacteria interaction with the various elements. And so this kind of an ice slush would be perfect to study sometime in the future. But unfortunately, due to space regulations today, which are quite strict, we're actually unable to or forbidden to land in this area because um, 
there is a chance that these samples might be contaminated. So unless a specific spacecraft is designed that will not contaminate these samples, um, we can't really land there. So hopefully one day there will be a way to land there or possibly drive to this area uh, using some sort of a rover to try to study these samples and to discover what's inside of this ancient ice slush that's, that was deposited by the second mega tsunami on Mars. But nevertheless, the idea itself and the proposition itself, the proposition that there were these mega tsunamis that destroyed the shoreline and deposited all of these um, ice samples or ice slushy samples, across the previous shoreline of Mars is actually brilliant. It kind of shows you how brilliant some scientists are and how they can think outside of the box to come up with these really cool explanations for something that didn't make sense before. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about. This was a pretty cool discovery and actually finally puts the idea of um, Martian oceans to rest. It finally explains why we don't see the shorelines, which was probably one of the biggest mysteries in the past, and kind of gives us a really good proof that there were definitely oceans, because if there are signs of mega tsunamis in the past, there must have been oceans as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, my, and my apologies for my coarse voice. I've been having really tough cold uh, that kind of caused me to speak with a very strange and rough voice over the past few days. Oh my god, this is a very large explosion. What is that from? What caused this? Was it one of my moons? Oh no, that was... No, that wasn't one of the moons. Something collided with Mars and caused this. I don't know what. But it's beautiful. Look at how beautiful it is. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. My apologies for the voice. I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully, my voice gets better in the next one. Game you later. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video and like it if you've enjoyed watching it. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me create better videos in the future and at the same time gives you an opportunity to support this channel financially. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.